Percocets, money Percocets Rep the set, gotta rep the set yeah. Chasing check, I don't ever chase no bitch uh. Mask on, fucking mask on but uh, before I invite the ambassador to make his remarks, I'd just like to highlight the hashtags for this evening. Uh, that is United for Climate. This, that's the number four between United and Climate. And Klima Diplo. So you can use those if you're tweeting. And of course, tag us at EU in RW. And now I'm going to invite uh, Ambassador Nicola Belomo, the head of the delegation of the European Union to Rwanda to make his opening remarks. Welcome. Flora and uh, well, let me at very uh, introduce myself. I'm Nicola Bellomo, head of the delegation of the European Union uh, in uh, Rwanda. And I'd like also on behalf of the whole staff of the delegation to welcome all of you uh, tonight. Uh, this event, as was mentioned, is framed within our uh, European Union uh, uh, um, Climate Diplomacy Week, which is uh, celebrated all over the world. Our delegations are uh, conducting a number of activities. Uh, here in Kigali we have decided to uh, um, organize a, a theater piece followed by a, a panel uh, discussion. Um, I'd like to be very happy to join uh, forces and to team up with uh, uh, Green Drinks. As you know, they host on a monthly basis uh, very interesting and stimulating discussions on uh, conservation and, uh, and uh, environmental issues. And tonight we are also very proud to uh, partner with the embassies of Germany and Sweden and uh, uh, we will uh, soon welcome the uh, representatives of the embassies here tonight. Uh, the European Union is a global leader when it comes to climate change. Uh, we are leading by uh, um, action and the uh, climate change is really on the top of the European Union uh, uh, agenda. We are very active in uh, reducing the uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions within the European Union, but we equally very much engaged in uh, partnership with other countries and regions in the world to do uh, likewise. Of course, uh, uh, fighting, cl fighting climate change is by definition a big challenge, but we also know that it can offer uh, very big opportunities. I mean, the uh, advantages of you know, fighting climate change are almost self-explanatory, I mean, you know, and probably a very long list, you know, from protecting our planet, our health and that of the animals, uh, to the introduction of new technology, and not least the creation of uh, new jobs linked to uh, uh, uh, climate change. So uh, uh, we uh, are convinced that this is feasible, this is affordable, and on top of it, it's uh, a fact that uh, a lack of action today which will be more expensive in terms of fighting the effect and the negative effect of climate change uh, in the future. But tonight, the objective of the evening is, uh, of course, to, to, to gather with you tonight, but not to talk about policy frameworks, not to talk about international agreements, important as they are, of course. But uh, the objective of this uh, uh, event is to uh, identify concrete actions that as individuals we can do in our daily life to make a, a contribution to this fight against climate change. So this allows also me to thank our distinguished uh, uh, panelists that uh, also joined us uh, tonight. And I'm sure they will bring, thanks to their experience, they will bring uh, an interesting uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, discussion and I hope that they will also generate a stimulating uh, a question and answer uh, session. Uh, now I think uh, uh, it's time to uh, introduce the Mashirika Theatre Company and we really I'd like to thank you uh, the Mashirika Theatre Company for joining us tonight. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, it's for the good cause and I hope that also thanks to this uh, artistic performance we can you know, receive and transmit this positive message. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Kaçırın mera. Tüken içine içine içine içine. Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. Bazı ne var ya kuvvet gündü? Bana bak. Hocay! Hocay! Bana bak hocay hocay. Gelin mera. İçine içine içine içine içine. Ejerin mi? Ejerin mi? Ejerin mi? Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. Kaçırın mera. İçine içine içine. Turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan turan
We have to play for a while. It is time that we reach out. When we learn about the cost, and it's easier to ignore. Know, Change the thing to call yourself, and that is going to be what more the time is. Now, it's time to realize. We time to save a life. In this world that we fight. Look at me, look at us. I tell you, my friend, we're going to do this from the start. Yeah, it starts with us and no one else. It starts with Daisha and no one else. It starts with all of us. It starts with all of us. It starts with us right now, right? So Another round of applause to our fantastic uh, performance. I, I think it was extremely interesting also to see how art and culture can be a tool for, uh, let's say, development, uh, a tool for change. You know, that strong message that uh, was uh, delivered in such a different and uh, dynamic way. I think it was, uh, it was a fantastic example that we should use more art and culture to deliver our, our messages. So once again, allow me to thank all of you and uh, our panelists for joining us this evening. Um, you know, uh, and once again, as I mentioned in my, in my brief uh, uh, remarks uh, uh, at the very beginning, the objective of this evening is not to talk about the macro level, the policy frameworks and the, uh, the, the international agreements, but to see how can we, as citizens, we can make a difference. What do we do in our daily life in order to make sure that we preserve, we protect our planet? And uh, uh, so I would immediately uh, uh, ask Dancila to kick uh, start and uh, share with us your experience and frame it within the activities of your organization. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador. And um, thank you, uh, all of you, for coming. Uh, my name is Dansila Mukakamari, and I'm the executive director of Arikorba Nziza. 
uh, or the Guanese Association of Ecologists. It's um, an environmental and development organization working with uh, local communities in rural areas. And uh, basically we are in uh, forest zones uh, because we are supporting communities to fight against uh, deforestation uh, through environmental actions. And also uh, we fight against climate change. Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, a bamboo vehicle here today. I was also looking to the bike to see if it's a bamboo bike because actually there is an international initiative on a bamboo bike and the bamboo is really a plant which is very potential for climate change, for environmental protection, for landscape restoration. So uh, we work specifically on bamboo and uh, I'm very happy to be today with the European Union. Your, your initiative on solar energy, if you can share this with us. And also, uh, I mean, in Rwanda we have beautiful stories to tell. What, what you, would you portray and what the message you would give to us as Europeans from, from Rwanda? Uh, interesting question. But briefly, uh, so uh, I'm part of a company called ARED and we develop a technology, a solar kiosk technology, to basically revolutionize the way distribution of digital services, including connectivity, is done for low-income people in rural area, semi-urban area. So uh, it's a technology that I, I spent nine years developing, not personally, but uh, it's been a personal journey. And um, so uh, from the time we started from charging phone now we do wi-fi connectivity we, we we still do phone charging we sell all digital services the rainbow government services airtime mobile so the idea is to create a, uh, create a one-stop shop and we use solar technology and uh, we went a step further we, we use a micro franchise business model so we recruit we train and we monitor mostly women and people with disability to operate those kiosks but briefly to answer your question, what the, the EU should do, I mean, I think uh, engaging local innovation is the key. Uh, there's so much innovation I come across, across Africa, not just Rwanda, that lacking the support they need to scale up their business. Instead of importing or bringing uh, technology from outside, I think what the EU or any organization from, from abroad should support local innovation. I think that's the future. And no one knows better a local problem than the local innovator. Thank you. Thank you very much. You pointed to one of the elements that we also mentioned uh, uh, earlier, uh, uh, linked to job creation. And you pointed also to the positive impact on communities, on the youth, people with disabilities. So these are extremely interesting uh, uh, elements to, to, to the discussion. Um, I would now uh, give the floor to uh, Emily. You, are, uh, you run a place called Coco Club. You, sh you should tell us and tell, you, tell us why you are here tonight. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for having me and I'll be keeping uh, keep it green. Um, yeah, so my journey which has landed me in this seat today is um, the fact that I'm a mom of two kids and was constantly trying to find a place um, that would please both the adults and the kids and it felt like you kind of always had to compromise one or the other and so that is how Coco Club was born which is hopefully a balance of um, things that parents and or people without children can enjoy as well as children. Um, but as a business owner you then have to make all of these decisions on what you want to put out into the world and so from the very beginning I always wanted to try to be as uh, plastic free as possible which um, as many of you know that <laughs> what is environmentally friendly isn't always business friendly so that was uh, quite a challenge so from the beginning we said no plastic straws uh, no plastic uh, takeaway containers no plastic bottled water or soda bottles um, and tried to kind of get creative how we could find alternatives so it took us a lot of trial and error but we eventually figured out how to make this thing called a dupe box which is good uh, spelled backwards, 
um, which we make out of recycled paper bags and a glue made out of flour and water, and then we dip it in pure beeswax to help with water resistance. And then we tie it all together with uh, banana uh, uh, rope, banana leaf rope. Um, and so things like sauces, we put in um, passion fruit can, uh, shells that have been scooped out and just trying to find creative ways to not put more plastic into the universe. Um, which, I mean, when you start reading statistics, it's really shocking how much plastic, uh, you know, we put out there every day. I'm aware of the plastic uh, bag uh, ban, but recently the Minister of Environment announced a new set of uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, policies that they are tabling in Parliament uh, in order to even uh, be more ambitious and uh, add to this uh, plastic bag ban. I would like to have your opinion and how you, you see this uh, say direction with the aspirations and the very uh, uh, um, let's say ambitious development objectives of this country so, Go ahead. please now, i remember when uh, the plastic bag got banned and actually uh, uh, i was very surprised uh, about it i mean it, it, it's amazing how the government has been very uh, you know, kind of uh, futuristic about seeing the the impact uh, plastic would have, uh, and I think it, it will open new industries like bioplastic. Uh, I remember that's an industry that still needs to be developed because it's one thing to ban something; it's another thing to find a replacement to uh, to solve that problem. I know paper bag now is popular, but it, what I like is how Rwanda has become an example to other African countries. Um, about this initiative, where when they first started, it was kind of uh, a, a raw. It, it was kind of at least the private sector took it personal, like oh, you know, you're going to affect our business negative in a negative way. And now it's becoming a, a trend. We're following the run trend, so that's the thing. But now we need to, and as you mentioned, we need to go further. We need to push the envelope and start, you know, incorporating bioplastic, other technology out there that can solve some of, of the other initiatives. Yeah, and just to add to that, I was reading that like Unilever did a, an international study last year that was saying that 33% of consumers are more likely to support brands that they believe um, have a social, a positive social or environmental impact. So I think as much as there are challenges, if you can find solutions, there's a big market that's there to try to support you to keep it going. Um, so that's. to add anything okay. very good okay so give us let's say each of you one concrete let's say something that we can go back home and, and think about it you know something that we can all of us as citizens as uh, uh, let's say residents in, in Kigali we can do we all as foreigners very much impressed by the Uganda concept uh, uh, you know, whoever comes to, to Kigali is impressed, of, the, the, of course, by the, the, the how clean the city is, and we always refer to Uganda. To what extent this is now something that has been probably initially imposed, I assume, to the people, but then slowly becomes something that you own and you are proud of. Uh, do you think is it just that? Uh, that's also my question. One day per month, or Rwandans carry this kind of concept every day? And because I can tell you, in my own country, is not the case. So, uh, and this is also something when you say we can be proud of what Rwanda does because it's a model for African countries. Rwanda is a model not only for African countries, but also for many other countries in the world. And you know, these days, uh, you know, your leaders and your, uh, your uh, uh, uh, even private sector representatives, non state actors, are constantly involved, mentioned, invited in international fora to share your, uh, your vision, first of all, but also to share your action. So I would like to, to get your opinion on, uh, on this. Uh, for me, I will say that uh, the concept of Uganda is carried by the citizen daily, on their daily basis. Because you cannot make your neighborhood clean just one day per month. You just have to do it daily. We wake up in the morning and, and think about how I want to go home in a home that is clean. 
So I can say that we keep that uh, on a daily basis, but the monthly base, the monthly day is just uh, to reunite with all our neighbors and get that cleanliness on a common goal. Yeah, um, according to me, uh, Umuganda is uh, is an initiative which is uh, internationally recognized as a best practice in Rwanda. And it's a very important action because um, the, the product or the benefit are relevant, especially in terms of uh, environmental protection. When we see how trees are planted, when we see uh, how hillside are protected, uh, when we see how infrastructures are rehabilitated. So um, it's really um, an important or very potential uh, initiative. But it can be the way we are organizing it uh, on a monthly basis. It's fruitful, but it can be better productive if it's uh, improved in the way it's organized. Because um, all the citizens are not really participating because you can see some of them staying at home, not coming to join others. So there is a way also to sensitize all the citizens to, to participate. Uh, there is also a way to improve the quality of um, uh, activities uh, conducted within uh, Umuganda because um, it is observed, for example, that environmental committees are not uh, associated. Well, you are aware that from district level, sector, cell, we have environmental committees. But most of the time, I, I, I'm not sure that they are associated to the Muganda planning. If they were, for example, associated, um, it will be, the planning will be better because it's like, there is, there is no link between these uh, environmental committees and the planners of Uganda. If they were uh, working together, it would be better. So it's, uh, it's like uh, something uh, we need to work on. But we all have in mind when it comes to uh, you know, mitigation of the effects of climate change um, and the reduction of uh, uh, emissions. Uh, what are the challenges in Rwanda? I'm seeing a mushrooming of uh, initiatives. Um, to what extent these are coordinated? I welcome, and uh, as a matter of fact, the reason you are here tonight is because we also want to acknowledge local solutions um, and innovation, as you mentioned. And uh, what are the challenges uh, in the in the uh, in the business and? Uh, what is the, uh, let's say, the affordability element there? I mean, uh, to what extent the technology now is affordable, to the extent that really can make a difference? Um, you know, the, the, the, the biggest challenge is when you develop a new product, is that there is no capacity, and that's not a rundown problem, this is an African problem. There is no product development capacity in Africa. We had to go overseas, actually, in Germany, that's where we had to go to develop our technology. The second challenge is there's a lack of funding for innovation, uh, a total lack of funding, um, especially in research and development. You know, if you go to the West, you can access grants uh, to, to develop a product. Uh, and a lot of time when you have an idea, they're trying to push you to go and get a loan or a bank, which is the worst idea. I mean, the worst thing you can do is trying to get a loan to develop a product. Uh, you'll be out of business in, in very quickly. Uh, those are the challenges. I mean, there's no incentive uh, also. There's a lack of incentive, tax incentive. We, we are social impact enterprise. Uh, but there's only two ways. You're either taxed as an NGO or as a for-profit. 
I actually believe there should be another bracket for social impact. You see, if you incentivize uh, private sector, then it, it flourish. And, and there's a lack of incentive in that aspect. Now, I have to be also positive. There's also uh, tax clearance for... Uh, I'll give you another perfect example. There's a 124 component to our product, right? Um, there's a solar panel, battery, Wi-Fi system. I'm not going to get into detail. The panels are exempt from taxes, right? So we're still trying to negotiate to do the assembly line here in Rwanda so we can export because we operate also in uh, Uganda. We're about to be in West Africa. Now, if we bring the product finished, we tax as one product. If we bring all the components and try to assemble here in Rwanda, you are taxed on all components, and your product becomes twice as much, twice as much expensive as bringing one time. So there's also uh, a lot of uh, in that area needs to be changed. Uh, that's what I think. Well, thank you. It's a it's a very relevant uh, point, which is also linked to regional integration, because of course these kind of initiatives can also benefit from you know, uh, an improved uh, uh, regional integration when it comes not only to standards and, uh, but also in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, duties and customs that you need to, to pay uh, and border management of course. So I think all goes together and once again Rwanda is in the forefront in terms of pushing for not only regional but continental integration at, uh, at the AU level and I think you can, we can all benefit for this uh, from this uh, Even environment, if the environment is not clean, it creates the stress to human being, and uh, there is instability in mental health or men optimal men mental and physical health. I would like to ask you, what is your contribution in helping the government, especially in improving the biodiesel plantations? because the diaz also is cause of uh, environment pollution, but the way of treating the biodiaz so as to help the environmental sustainability also is a good project. What is your contribution in helping this project? Because um, I, I, have, I have seen some projects which was, were failed, but uh, I'd like to know if you have a contribution to help those projects of biodiesel uh, so as to help the environmental sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Zawadi. I'm a, a master's student in, uh, in Belgium. I'm doing international relations, so I'm in my, mas uh, my last year. Uh, um, I did my um, bachelor's degree in Rwanda, so I, tr I gain a lot uh, for the AU what it's doing as a global leader, especially in uh, promoting uh, the fight against the climate change. So um, uh, I want to, I would like to add something about uh, the objective of these events, which has been left behind. So uh, the fact that we have heard about the bamboo project, is, uh, which represents uh, a good potential for Rwanda and even for the regional or uh, regional uh, protection of our environment. Uh, thank you for talking about the solar energy, which is uh, in terms of innovation, uh, which is really good. And we have also had the initiative for community, uh, the Umuganda, the role of Umuganda as community is very important for Rwanda. But I would like to add a like, changing habit in our daily life. Because we can also do something by changing some habits. For example, we can link uh, uh, um, we can link something for, uh, to protect our environment, for example, by changing habit. I can give an example. When you go to a supermarket, we don't have like a, a, a place where if we bring our own glass, they can fill, for example, if I want a kilo of sugar. So we have to take something which is already filled, and maybe it's not necessary to, to produce that thing. So in my, um, at my, I'm a, I'm a mother, I have two kids, so I started to, to think about the climate change, not uh, what I can do as a government, but what I can do as someone who lives dairy, 
and who think like plastic is not good. For example, I don't buy soda in plastic. I buy soda with a glass because I know it's good. So as a youth, we need to do something in our daily life to protect uh, our environment. Thank you very much. Again, uh, I can only speak for myself. You know, I, I'm not going to speak for others. But, but to answer, I think uh, my belief is that they, they, they need to be a three-step uh, process for things to change, uh, not just in Rwanda or in Africa, but worldwide. First, we need to incorporate a different mindset in, into the educational system, from from primary, secondary. We need to have some type of uh, uh, component that, that talked about the environment, that teach those kids that you need to clean this environment, you know, nature. We need to live, you know, uh, in, in symbiosis with, with nature, or it's going to be a, a big problem. The, the second thing is, I, I think government can play a big role by incentivizing individuals. So, for example, I've seen schema in Japan where if you recycle, you get a free bus ticket, for example. There's a lot of things, we, it's all about, you know, coming up with, thinking outside the box and coming up with new ideas. For example, I'll tell you a perfect example. I was trying to bring an electrical car about three years ago. And um, I was hoping that I was going to get tax exemption. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows an, a, a car is 100% taxed, right? So I was hoping I'll get at least 20, 30% tax. But no, uh, they will tax the same way as they tax a regular car. I think if they incentivize, if government come with a, a policy and say, hey, listen, if you bring, if you import an electrical car, you only pay 20%. I guarantee you, in five years, you'll see a huge amount of electrical car. The last thing is, I think we need to come up with more funding. I'm, I'm a big believer in the private sector. I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. I truly believe that if you pump money into ideas and innovation, you'll see a lot of change. And China is a perfect example. As much as they, they, they produce a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the CO2s, China produced the most amount of solar buses in the world right now. You know, they're really shifting everything. So, but billions and billions of dollars going into this type of innovation. We don't find that in Africa. the wastewater that comes from the uh, daily activities at home. That's my first comment. Second, there is a challenge in many business premises uh, in this city, uh, uh, for example, restaurant, hotels, uh, uh, business activities, where you see that wastes which are produced are not sorted out. So you see, biodegradable wasters are mixed with non-biodegradable wasters. And this makes difficult uh, their recycling or reuse where it is really difficult to sort out them. So I would recommend uh, the government to sensitize business premises to show the on-site sorting out of wasters where uh, there should be different bins to different types of wasters. Thank you. About uh, expansion, I mean, uh, but but briefly, based on what I understood, uh, that um, uh, we we we operate in refugee camps, we operate in in rural area. So I'm not sure when you say we're not touching the the, the base of the pyramid because we are. Uh, and expansion is it's it's a matter of how confident are you about growing your business, so it's, it's a personal matter. If you're a business owner that want to play safe, then you can stay until you get to a certain level. I, I'm not sure we can talk about it a little bit later, uh, but I like the, the one of the question about uh, recycling, and, and I, I do want to touch about this because that's a project I'm working on. I truly believe that uh, the homes of the future will be processing and uh, creating their own energy and processing their own waste. This idea of centralizing energy and centralizing water distribution will end. Per, with this global warming and water is not just the issue. We'll be definitely processing our waste. You can use it for your own garden. Collecting rainy water, to filter that, to use for your daily basis. That's definitely the future. That's a project I'm working on. Uh, and last thing I want to touch about, and that's specifically for the youth. We, we need to stop looking at environment just as a, as a hobby or personal things you have to do on a daily basis. 
green business is the future. You know, you, you can build a business focusing on green business. It's the future. Today is the exception. Tomorrow it will be the norm. You know, tomorrow you will bring solution to the government, to the individual. They'll have to come to you because this global warming is getting worse and worse and worse. And you can experience this. And this is an opportunity for the youth. Instead of looking for answer outside, you know, if you look at my background, I'm not an engineer. You know, I, I was not an A student. You know, and you'll be surprised how I came up with this idea. You can come up with an idea. Take the initiative. You know, take the initiative. You have access to the internet. There's billions of amount of information that you can get from the internet to come up with whatever solution you want. You know, whether, whether it's waste, whether it's water filtration, whether it's energy. And by the way, solar energy is not the only energy production solution in the world. You know, I don't want to make it sound like we chose solar because it, it fit into our technology. But biogas, you have plenty of other uh, uh, solutions. CSP, concentrated solar power, I can name plenty. I don't believe in one solution fits all. You know, there has to be different solutions to different problems. Well, to your question about um, separating compostable and non-compostable, that's actually a new government initiative for all um, businesses and anyone in the hospitality industry, you actually, from this month, I think, you are required to have two different bins. So one for compostable uh, materials, which is great. I don't know exactly what, what will be done with that, but that is something that's required now. And in terms of what we try to use in, if for, for food waste and just re recycling things, for example, like coffee grounds, we just recently tried to switch from um, hand, -held, like hand soap dispensers that are made out of plastic to making our own bar of soap using coffee grounds or we started making dog treats using the pulp from uh, carrot juice and other types of vegetables so you know using that somehow so just trying to be um, yeah as innovative as possible where, where you can be and um, yeah I was gonna basically say exactly what you said you said it so much better than I ever could that <laughs> um, yeah I think it's a scary time right now and it's easy to kind of think of these like big sugar coat, these little things that, you know, we, we really need to have um, this at the forefront of our minds in every kind of decision that we make. And, you know, whether it be reading more articles about it or books or documentaries and really kind of jolting yourself into realizing that this is something that's, you know, smack dab in front of us and we need to find solutions and change our behaviors in order for things not to get, you know, tremendously worse. And I think it's putting yourself, you know, getting out of your comfort zone to kind of take in that information because it is scary and I think a lot of people are overwhelmed with the weight of what that means and how can I make a difference and you know it's just it's too overwhelming but I think just like putting yourself in a position where you, you believe that you can make a difference and um, that there are a lot of people out there actually who are, are ready to support you so that's that's inspiring. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, let's take a couple of questions. I like your inspiration. I have been talking to you, and I really, you really inspire me in business. So my question goes to: You have been doing great work and amazing work, but you also have some idea, and they have outstanding idea that can change the world. It starts with me, and it starts with you. I've been meeting on New Times, and I've seen that you have less. 200, 250,000 in crowdfunding. What are the strategy have you used so that you can inspire other you who are facing with unlimited fund? Thank you. Is of the country, is it because of the lack of means or is it because of the skills? The second question goes to my brother who was saying in terms of I mean, solar system, in terms of innovative. It's true that see, our country doesn't have many mechanisms of accessing funds, particular grants, but I know there is one for NERWA, Fund for Environment and Climate Change. I think it has got three windows through which you can access funds. One is public institution, the other one is private sector, and the third one I think is a civil society organization. Now, what are the factors that are preventing people, I mean the organizations, 
to access fund? Is it because of the DDS procedures or is it because of uh, people have no information about that? Thank you very much. I answer about the Fonewa question because that's, <laughs> that's a very interesting. Uh, I know Fonewa very well. We actually applied full time and got denied full time. But uh, if, you, if you look at Fonewa statistics, only 5% of the fund goes to the private sector. 5%. Uh, so they have a lot of work, but they did mention, but I, I want to do a final word to the youth because I, I believe uh, you guys are the future and, and you guys need to take more initiative. Stop thinking small, think big, you know. Uh, there's, there's so much work to be done. There is no one solution to solve this problem. Whatever solution you have, small, medium or big, it's, if, even if it's a solution for your community, it's still a solution, you know. Take initiative. Stop being reactive. Be proactive, you know. You have the power to pretty much accomplish anything you want to do. Believe me when I tell you that. You live in the best time where information is available. You have no excuse for not taking initiative. You know, is it hard? Extremely hard. I can't tell you. It's going to be, the, you know, Trying to build a solution and make it sustainable because that's the key. It's the hardest thing you're probably going to be doing. But at the same time, it's the most fulfilling thing you're going to do for yourself, for your family, and for your community. Uh, so for me, I'm not going to from what he said because we the youth are the stakeholder of the future that we all want to fight for. But as he said, it's hard. You may have a solution and want to act on it, but you find so many challenges and you have to learn how to cope with the challenges at the same time being implementing. So what the message I can give to, to the innovators or civil society organization is try to link whatever solution you have, whatever innovation you have, try to link it with the youth in your community or in the neighborhood because maybe you're the one having the resource to implement a solution. But always remember that there's youth who are ready to engage in order to make the solution sustainable. And because, as he said, we are strong, maybe, super strong. Uh, so when we come up together, we can do really big things. And we don't cost much as civil society organization can cost. Yeah, just to say thank you so much for having me here and uh, it's true the youth that I've worked with for both the Tiles and at Coco Club have been just so motivated and eager and they're really worth investing in because you know they're ready to give it your all, their all which is great um, and just a reminder to I guess you know this as cliche it is to vote with your wallet to make you know purchases invest in things that you believe in um, and also one thing that I've learned just from just from being here and seeing so much skilled labor is by trying to be creative even at home and trying to make your own version of something you can understand what goes into it and so you can make better choices whether it be you know a face cream or soap or once you kind of get into the nitty-gritty of how these things are made and you can kind of realize okay you know I, I want to I choose this group of products over this group because of environmental reasons, social impact, whatever it is, um, you kind of have a, a better understanding of, of uh, what goes into it. So that would be my piece of advice. Thank you. Well, thank you very much again for your uh, extremely interesting contribution. Uh, uh, and and as, as I mentioned, I hope that this event and, and you know, the European Union is always ready to create and provide platforms. I think that you mentioned the importance of generating these kind of links between those who have technology, ideas, innovation, but also that are able to, uh, to motivate people. I mean, I, I go home tonight with these very strong messages to the youth. I mean, it does not come from, from us, from me, or from whoever. It comes from someone who is being you know, developing a very, very ambitious project uh, and, and now I think is here also to share with his uh, fellow uh, uh, citizens his, uh, his uh, challenges but also his, uh, his achievements. So I, I would like to thank all of you for this uh, very stimulating uh, discussion. Now, without any further ado, I would ask uh, Flora to move to the uh, award uh, ceremony and then you're all invited to a small uh, reception. Thank you very much.